Let's talk about the elephant in the room, regulation in crypto. Whether we like it or not, regulation in the crypto industry is gonna happen eventually. So we need to be one step ahead of it. I myself have been putting off looking into it for a long, long time. But finally, I decided to do some proper research to see what is happening in Ireland, where I am from, which will also apply to the EU. I know talk about laws and regulations can kind of get heavy, so I'm gonna keep it light as possible and keep the video fast. So let me share with you what I have found during my research. First off, let's have a look at the latest ongoings in Ireland and see what's changed recently. In April, Ireland signed in the latest anti-money laundering directive into law. This new law also pulls in cryptocurrency providers under its umbrella. So they refer to them as VASP, which are virtual asset service providers. All of these cryptocurrency service providers will be required to register with the central bank and complete due diligence on its customers. And that includes where the customer's assets are coming from and where they're going to. So these rules are specifically going to apply to cryptocurrency exchanges and to custodian wallets. So for anybody who doesn't know what a custodian wallet is, say for instance if you buy some crypto on Coinbase and you leave it on their exchange. So they will hold it there for you and they haven't given you your private keys. So they're holding your cryptocurrency in custody for you. So that would be an example of a custodial wallet. But a non-custodial wallet would be something like Trust Wallet for example, where you actually hold the private keys to your cryptocurrency on your own device and you're in custody of it. So from what I can see, these rules don't just apply to firms that are operating in Ireland, but also to foreign companies that give services to Irish citizens. These new rules shouldn't be a problem for exchanges like Coinbase because they already have a KYC process when you actually sign up for them. However, exchanges like Changely, for example, I don't believe you need to go through any KYC process to sign up, so they might run into some issues eventually. All of these companies were given three months to register with the central bank, and there's about two months left on it. I think the deadline is the 23rd of July. And there is a public register on the central bank website showing you what companies have already signed up. So I decided to go and have a look at it today and just to see out of curiosity what firms have actually signed up and registered with the central bank. Have a guess how many have actually registered so far. You're right, zero. And here is a copy of the register just to prove that. But they still have two months to do it. I was looking through some of the forms that they actually have to fill out and they are a bit of a pain in the hole by the looks of them. So I'd say it will be up to the deadline before any of them actually sign up if they ever do. So Ireland is not the first in the EU to implement these rules. So the Dutch did it about a year ago exactly. What they saw there was a lot of cryptocurrency service providers decided to leave the country altogether and go to crypto friendly countries. One of the highest profiles to do it were Deribit, the derivatives exchange, they decided to move over to Panama. I also decided to have a look through some of the publications and press releases on the central bank website just to see what the general narrative is on cryptocurrencies. These extracts are from the deputy governor Sharon Donnery and basically the gist of what she is saying is they are pro innovation in the payment space but they have concerns about anti-money laundering and the impact on the environment. So it's pretty much the same ding dong that we've been hearing for years. Now on a wider scale, what is happening in the EU and what can we see coming down the tracks in the next few years? The EU are one of the front runners trying to regulate cryptocurrencies and a lot of other countries will probably follow their lead and try and piggyback on the work that they end up doing. In September 2020, a proposal was put forward called the Markets in Crypto Assets Regulation. I'm not going to get too bogged down in the detail of this or else this video could get very heavy. This micro regulation is basically designed to catch all cryptocurrencies that don't meet the definition of a financial instrument. So what we have seen a lot recently in the US is there's been a bit of debate over whether cryptocurrencies are financial instruments or not and that was kind of the whole basis of what the court case around XRP is at the moment. So next up, let's have a look at how that Mika regulation actually categorizes different cryptocurrencies. So I just have a list here of how they actually break it down. So they have a catch-all category here for everything. And then they have number two there, they have utility tokens like Filecoin. Then they have number three, asset reference tokens like Libra. And then they have number four, our e-money tokens like USDC and Tether. So from what I can see from the detail of the proposal, utility tokens will not be included in the scope of the regulation. But a major part of the regulation is going to focus on number three and number four there, which are stable coins. This regulation is going to make it really, really hard for stable coins to operate within the Eurozone. Every stable coin will need to be approved by the EU and they will also need to be an approved credit institution and have an e-money license. Also on each of their white papers, they will need to have 
the branch address of where they are based in the EU. And from what I can gather, another complication that could come from this is that you won't be able to earn interest on your stable coins. So places like Blockify probably won't be able to offer you interest on any stable coins. Another part of the proposal goes through the level of scrutiny and the requirements for the reserves behind these stable coins also. So as we've seen recently, I think Tether released the details of how they split up the reserves backing the stable coin. Well, there are going to be specific requirements for how much cash, for example, that they have to hold and stuff like that. The next part of the regulation goes on to talk about DeFi and decentralized token issuances. So I'm just going to take you through a small part of an article here that explains it much better than I ever could. The regulation of DeFi and decentralized token issuances. The issuance of a crypto asset in the EU, amongst others, requires the publication of a white paper and notification to a supervisory authority and the establishment of a legal entity in the EU. DeFi token projects such as Uniswap, Compound or Maker could clearly never comply with these standards. While they might benefit from the grandfathering clause, future DeFi tokens will not. And as a result, their incapacity to comply due to their decentralized nature, crypto trading platforms under MICA won't be allowed to list them any longer. Obviously, this would be true for all well-known cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ether and Litecoin, etc. If hypothetically they were to be issued after MICA's entry into force. So what this seems to suggest is that all of the cryptocurrencies that are currently already out there well before any of this regulation comes into place, they might get a bit of an exception to the rule. But what I think we're going to see a lot of in the future is a lot of different legal cases about different cryptocurrencies deciding what kind of bucket they actually fit into. Because they're going to have a lot of time now before this proposal actually becomes law. So they have a lot of time on their hands now to find out different loopholes and different strategies of actually getting around it before it actually even comes into place. From what I can see, the timeline on this legislation is anywhere between two to four years. And I think there's about an 18 month transition period going to be in place as well. So we don't really have to worry about it too much just yet. That was probably all a little bit overwhelming, but I don't think there's any need to panic just yet. But I think it will be important that we take these kind of factors into consideration when we are deciding on what cryptocurrencies to invest in in the future. Overall, in the long run, I think this is going to be very positive that cryptocurrencies are going to get normalized within the EU. This is a lot better than other countries like China or India, for example, which just decide to throw down blanket bans on cryptocurrencies at a whim. The EU realized the innovation that is going on, but they want to balance that with consumer protection. So that's pretty much all I have for today thanks very much for watching if anybody wants to start investing in cryptocurrencies and want to use binance you can get some discounts on your commissions if you use my link below so i'll talk to you guys again soon thank you again